is Blue Star Warrior One here. All the glory is the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. And I had another dream. There was ah oh, another dream, and uh, I ask God for dreams to tell you the truth before I go to bed. So I ask Him in prayer. And this dream, I was traveling the United States with this woman named Lizzie, and. We ended up in a in a hospital, and uh, for whatever reason, we ended up in this hospital. The hospital had like nobody in it, um, and they had like a quarantine camp in the hospital. And somehow, I end up in the quarantine camp, and for you know, um, the sea. We'll just call it the core, for the core, and you know what that is. It's going around, um, since um, the uh, since the last three years basically. Um, so I get I mean there's there's like tarps surrounding this mat, and this mat's covered in dried vomit. It's disgusting. I can feel the dried vomit. It's horrible, and the dried vomit's like a yellow color. Um, and it's just this humongous mat, and you have like tarp things around it. And I want out of there. And um, I don't want to be tested or anything. And the next thing you know, a uh, nurse, who's a staunchy nurse, and one of those old nurse outfits from back in the 1920s. She has like the white cap and the, the you know, the outfit. Have you ever seen people, nurses from the 1920s? This is what this nurse looks like, and she's very nice, and she lets me out, and she opens the door, the, uh, it's a folding door, and there is, a uh, Lizzie waiting, and, uh, I go with her, and Lizzie's like, yeah, and she says, oh, you're free to go, and you don't need to get tested or anything, and we're talking about going to the Grand Canyon, and, going to see our, our Redwood in, in California, and with me and this woman named Lizzie, we have this, like, this plan, and Lizzie's like, oh, well, if my husband can keep working and everything, you know, he's off in the, another state, and, you know, he can keep working, and we'll drive all the way over to see to see, you know, the Grand Canyon, and the nurse is like, if you go to the Grand Canyon, you know, you know, you'll, you know, the, the heat and everything will dry up the, uh, the core, you know, the, that illness, and you'll be fine and everything, and like, we'll be, we've had this plan that we'll be going for months, and it would be, it's January, and we'd be going out to, all the way out to the Grand Canyon, and then after that, see, see Cal after that, see California, and then... After that, drive all the way down to, you know, to see Florida and all the southern states and then drive back up. And, it, and we knew that when we would come back up, it would be uh, winter time back up into that the state that we were going to go back to. Um, which was, you know, like one of the states on the Upper East Coast. So, where her um, husband lived. Well, anyway... By the, by the time, the next clip is like, not us driving, but me being in Lizzie's driveway. So we're in this, um, in this driveway, and Lizzie's husband is an older man, we'll just, and him, he was Seto, Seto the husband, he like, he doesn't seem to care that his wife wants to disappear and everything. And we're just sitting in, in, in the side yard, and it's it's like a country yard. They have lots of property, and across the street from them is woods with a with a mobile home park in it. The next, you know, you start hearing all this screaming, very loud screaming, and people are screaming at the top of their lungs. And I leave um, Lizzie, who's sitting on this like wooden bench, wooden bench thing. This is basically just one giant ply of wood at the edge of this park. Of um, this part of her driveway, overlooking into the woods, while her husband's doing some type of like farm work or something, 
and um, I run up the driveway, and I see across the driveway in the in the woods with the mobile home park a mudslide, a humongous mudslide, and there is like all this mud, and it's just huge, and it's like overwhelming, and. You could hear people screaming, and you can see the mud coming up out of the ground and ripping off this one home's roof. It was one in, the, in that marble home park. There was a rancher in there, and its whole roof got ripped off and destroyed. And, you, and there was just like this Indian woman in there, and she was screaming at the top of her lungs. And people were getting buried in the mud. The mud just kept, kept coming, and then it crossed the street, but it didn't come to me. And I, I had um, a fanny pack on me. I thought, and I started looking for my, for my cell phone so I could record this, but I couldn't find it. And some of my chickens were here, and there was uh, my rooster Kashina, and my elderly rooster Serene was here, and a few hens. The hens don't get hurt, but um, the mudslide comes to the, comes onto the driveway, but it never get, it stops. It never get touches me, and. Kushina gets stuck between like this wall of mud and another part of the wall of mud, but he de- he gets stuck in there and and then there's like and then there's and then I and then the mudslide just stops and abruptly stops there and I start digging I see Kushina sticking out, you know, his head and, and all that. He's, he's a Kushina's a white rooster. And he's a big um uh, big red cone. And he's he's squeezed between um one slab of mud and another slab of mud. But I dig him out with my hand so easily that he just he gets free, and then I I have this instinct to dig more, and I lift up a piece of lump of mud, and under that is a cavern, with Serene in it, who's another white rooster, he's a seven year old white rooster in reality, and I get him out of there, and he hops away, because that's how he walks, cause, and so he hops away, and and uh, they both get out of the way, and I go looking, and the hens are fine. And the next thing you know, I'm in Lizzie's house, and uh, Lizzie lives in this house that's white. She lives in a white house, and the next thing you know, it's like there. Lizzie and her husband are 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 outside talking to this police officer, and I go out through the front door, and the police officer is telling them you can only spend fifty dollars a month, and that everyone is. Um, is under quarantine <laughs> and that you're not allowed to leave your property or anything or you'll be arrested and you're not allowed to so no more traveling um you're not allowed to travel at all you can't go anywhere and if you do you'll be um you'll get those um bars around your, your wrists and he was a straight trooper he wasn't an ordinary um cop. He was a state trooper. He had a, a state trooper's SUV. You know, one of those uh, state trooper SUVs. And it was a gray color. It was, it was said, you know, police on it. And it was gray. And it was a uh, Ford Escape SUV. And that's what he was in. And he never left the vehicle. He had a staunchy, you know, the staunchy police, police, state police hat and everything. And he was very stern, and he had just drove right over that flattened out mudslide drove in his vehicle and parked there, and it's like, you can't go anywhere. You're not allowed to go anywhere. And Lizzie's all upset, and her husband's like, what in the world is going on here? We're not allowed to leave the property, and we're not allowed to spend more than $50. And they were, like, completely oblivious, and... I ever heard that the officer saying that anyone who has the, you know, the, the core has to be locked down in the hospital. And, and then I remember that I was the one who stated that I had the core, you know what I mean? But nobody throws me in anywhere. Um, Lizzie's husband said I want me to go back in the house. And I don't listen to him. So... The next clip, I'm with Lizzie in a hospital, and this is a different hospital, 
This hospital is very, very cold. It's cold in there, and it's dim. There are a lot of lights working, and there isn't many lights in that hospital working. And there's this woman walking around in this purplish-blue-colored apron top. And she's, a, you know, a woman that's about, like, six foot tall. She has a good amount of meat on the bones. And the outfit only goes down and covers just a little bit of below her hips. And she has nothing else on, and she's wandering around like she's completely lost. And then, there, then we see, and then she disappears. And there's this nurse, and she's dressed in blue. She's dressed in baby blue, but it's the old outfit from the 1920s. So you know that that staunchy nurse uniform. But its color is blue, and she has one of those caps with a red plus on the top. And then the next thing you know, you know she killed that woman that was in that um, that bluish purple outfit. That went boy that was you know it was like like it covered her back and her chest and her, on top of her arms. But it didn't go below, it didn't go much below. It covered up just a little bit below her hips, and it was like one of those extremely short like dresses or things. But it was like a medical outfit, and you know for like a patient. And you know that she was killed her and stabbed her to death with a with a pair of scissors. Um, I get that knowledge in my head. I don't see it. I do see a clip in my in like in a flash in my head of of the nurse with a. Um, with a pair of scissors or a knife or something, something very sharp. I think it was a knife. Yeah, it was a knife. It was one of those, like, um, chef knives. And I'm standing there next to Lizzie, and there's this, um, there's this pole. And on top of the pole is an infant. And inside the, inf it's an infant. And it's a copy of an infant, and it's inside this globe thing that's spinning. And I remember getting out my phone and recording it, and when the phone recorded it, um, the thing was spinning really fast, and you could see light, col you know, colors of light circling around the baby in that glass um, container. And it was a weird-shaped glass container. Um, it was round around the baby, and then went in, and then went around a little bit above the top. And it just, it was, looked like it was spinning at like s s supersonic speeds, you know, when it was on that hall and it would be recorded by my uh, smartphone on the screen because you saw the light going around the baby in circles. And, um, like the thing was spinning really fast. And I knew I had to get out of that hospital. And I kept telling Liz, we have to get out of that hospital. We have to get out of this hospital. And the hospital's like, there's a lot of lights and the ceilings are gone. The walls are pure white, but it's like an off-white and it, it feels, it's very cold in there. And you hear somebody screaming somewhere. And the next clip, the next clip is like, they want to lock me in, in to, uh, into the, uh, solitary confinement. Um... And they don't. And in there, and I see, like, they have security around there. They have the military surrounding the hospital, and they have guns. And so if anyone tries to escape the hospital illegally, they will be shot at. And you can't escape without being, having the, uh, having a pencil, you know, put up the nose. And, uh, and all that. And you had to, and you had to also have taken the, uh, Mark of the Beast, the Magic Ocean Potion to Escape. Neither me or Lizzie had taken it. And the next thing you know, we're out of that place. And they weren't any, they, they, the military men never saw us. We just got out of there. I don't know how we got out of there. Um, and that was the end of the dream. All I know is I got out of the hospital. And Lizzie got out of the hospital. And that was basically that. Now, Lizzie is short for Elizabeth, and, uh, I think, Li I'm trying to remember what Elizabeth means. I know Victoria means, um, victorious, it means victory. 
I think Elizabeth has a good meaning too. And Seto is a Japanese name. So, but Mu's a very, um, very strange, very strange tree, indeed. The mudslide was like, I felt like I was literally living there. But the fact the mudslide crossed the street, went to the tip of the driveway, and stopped was just amazing. Like, it didn't get near me. It was like probably two, three feet in front of me and never got any closer. And, and, the, and those two roosters didn't get hurt because Kashina is a rooster and Serene's a rooster. But the, that, those people, they were screaming and they were getting buried alive in that mud. And if you could imagine the this, this, this screaming that people go through when they're dying and being killed, blood curing screams are something you've never heard before unless you've heard them. I was, it was unbelievable. I knew that Indian woman that was next to the um, the modular house where the roof came off. She got buried alive in the mud. And I just saw it all. And I wanted to record it. The mud just came up out of the ground like a volcano. It was amazing. Well, I'll be back as Lord leads. <laughs>